Connecticut's candidates for U.S. Senate go head-to-head. -head. We ask the party chairs for analysis. And children arrested for prostitution in Connecticut will get some protection under the Safe Harbor Bill now under consideration. Also, losing the dash for cash, Connecticut does not make the cut for the first round of federal money to reform schools. Hi, you're watching The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. Connecticut's candidates for U.S. Senate, specifically for Senator Dodd's seat, recently had their first televised opportunities to take on the issues and each other. There were two live debates hosted by Fox Connecticut, The Current, and the University of Hartford. First up, the Democrats pitting Attorney General Richard Blumenthal against businessman Merrick Alpert. There seemed to be a divide in the way the opponents would take action with different takes on the often step-by-step -step process of politics. Incrementalism is the darling of career politicians, but at the end of the day, incrementalism is the enemy of the American people. For me, incrementalism is not necessarily a dirty word. It means taking a problem step by step, achieving results step by step, getting it done, producing and delivering. Next, it was the Republicans, Linda McMahon, Peter Schiff, and Rob Simmons, who agreed that they agreed as they tried to separate themselves from the pack. Not only am I the person that is most likely uh, you know, to, to beat uh, Blumenthal, but I can actually you know, change the country. I can actually bring about uh, the reforms that everybody wants, but unfortunately, none of the Republicans that we've sent to Congress in the past have been able to deliver. People do not want more career politicians. They want fresh faces. They want a fresh perspective. They want somebody who has not been there before. I'm a candidate who has military experience. I have experience in a, in a foreign embassy, working in a foreign embassy. Uh, I have experience uh, teaching uh, at a college level at UConn at Yale. Uh, I have experience working in the U.S. Senate, and all of this uh, builds my resume, if you will, as somebody who can multitask in Washington, D.C. Here now to rate the debates, Chair of the Connecticut State Democrats, Nancy DiNardo, and Chair of the State Republican Party, Chris Healy. Thanks to both of you for coming. Let's start off with the obvious, just uh, your initial impressions uh, of the debates. Let's start off with the Democratic debate. Well, I thought they were good. I, um, I think that our candidates clearly had two different viewpoints, uh, but I think each in their own right, you know, made a statement. Merrick had to come out fighting, and yet Dick has a proven track record, which shows that he does fight for Connecticut voters and he can get the job done. And the recent Rasmussen poll clearly shows Dick is 30 points against any opponent. So, but Dick is running like he is the underdog. So I think uh, they were good debates. Okay. What, what did you think of the Democratic debate? Well, I think Dick Blumenthal, <clears throat> it's a good thing he's 30 points ahead because he's going to burn through that pretty quickly based on his performance. Uh, Dick Blumenthal was incoherent. Uh, and when he was coherent, uh, he said that, uh, you know, businesses welcome lawsuits and that uh, business, uh, lawsuits create jobs. Well, those are the two things I took away. That and the word incrementalism, which for some reason is going to be, I think, the new buzzword of the year. Uh, but there is a huge difference between the Democrats, Democratic candidates. I mean, there's a far left wing, uh, Merrick Alpert, uh, and then there's Dick Blumenthal, who's sort of the far government wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, I think Dick Blumenthal looked uh, remarkably unprepared for a fellow who's been at this for 20 years. And Merrick Alpert showed a lot of, uh, I think, uh, poise, and he put, he put complete sentences together. But I think people saw Dick Blumenthal really what he is. He's still running for attorney general. Uh, and then when he was made to uh, answer for his record by Merrick Alpert, he admitted that a lot of the things that he's been, quote, fighting for, uh, he's come up short. What did you think, well, Nancy? Because I think some people did think that um, or, or perhaps it was just Merrick uh, doing better than expected, than people expected because they don't really know him. Or do you think that Blumenthal appeared at all uh, ambushed? No, I, I think it was that Merrick did better than what people had expected. And Dick Blumenthal's job as attorney general is to represent the people in the civil courts and fight um, when things are, people are breaking the law. 99% of the businesses in this state follow the law, and it's the 1% that he goes after. And he has done a great job going after that 1%. And I think the best thing that has happened to the Democratic Party are the Republican candidates. I mean, if you look at the Republican candidates, and this is the reason why I think Chris is talking about the Democrats, because he wants to deflect away from his Republican candidates. You have a woman who has made her money by promoting violence, degradation of women, and mental illness. You have a man who was lost a vote 
lost an election uh, because he was lockstep with George W. Bush and he was supporting a failed Republican policy. And their third candidate just wants to get rid of government altogether. And he's just a talking head. Well, what did you think of how, well, we'll start with you, Chris. What did you think of how they did in the debates, whatever you think of them? Well, Sorry. again, I mean, Dick Blumenthal, for someone who has to stand up in court and defend the state, gave almost incoherent answers. I mean, he couldn't complete a thought. He was trying to please everybody, as he always does. Uh, and he never really gave a reason of why we should elect him, other than the fact that he sues businesses and is proud of that. Uh, I don't argue with the fact that certain businesses have to be brought to bear. But he has created such an anti-business climate over his 20 years of terror uh, that many businesses just don't want to bother when Dick Blumenthal's filing lots of lawsuits that don't go anywhere. That's going to be part of this election as well. What did you think of the Republicans in the debates? Because some people thought that, uh, for instance, uh, Rob Simmons perhaps uh, did not do as well as, as Blumenthal. I think all of, all of our candidates showed that there is a clear choice in this election. Uh, we know where the Democrats has taken this country, uh, tr $13 trillion worth of debt. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, Dick Blumenthal and uh, Merrick never talked about that. And uh, Rob Simmons, Linda McMahon, Peter Schiff all talked about how we're going to create opportunity. Uh, Linda McMahon's built a successful business, whether, whether you like the, the product or not. It's still a successful business that's employed people. Peter Schiff uh, is a brilliant ec economist who talks about cutting through the, the waste and the slovenliness of government and the fact that we need to liberate capital, not tax it. And Rob Simmons has got a career, uh, a superior career in public service, and he's made a lot of hard votes that have been good for this state. So I think people saw a great cross-section of talent, but they're all united by the same thing, which is we've got to get government under control here. Was, and didn't, didn't you think it was a little, I think Tom Condon said, they were a little too polite, though? I mean, didn't you think? It was a little polite. boring. I don't know. Right. Well, I would agree with that, but I just want to point out that, I want to remind Chris that we are in this deficit because of George Bush. When George W. Bush got into office, he had a $3 trillion surplus, and he managed to blow through that and put us into this $3 trillion deficit. So, and that's why the Republicans are out, and one of his candidates was part of that group. What did you think of their performance at the debate, the Republicans? I, I would say that it was a, a rather ho-hum debate, that they really uh, were trying to, you know, not hurt each other and just deliver their own messages. Did you think that they did enough? Uh, one of the critiques was that they did not do enough to differentiate themselves. Well, debates usually are very constrictive in that. Mm -hmm. I think what we would like to have in the fall, whoever our candidates are, is to have a real debate where they talk to each other mm -hmm. and they get into the sort of the details that we're talking about. These debates are very short in time. People have to give very crisp answers in general terms about their philosophy. The Republican philosophy is a smaller government, is less taxes and less spending and a strong national defense. That's something the Democrats rarely spoke of. As to the Bush issue, which I love Democrats trying to beat up on Bush, and that's fair game, I suppose, but this is Barack Obama's budget. It's Barack Obama's country now to, to manage, and it's the Democrats in Congress who have taken deficit spending to a whole new level. In fact, it, it, it's just an amazing amount of a dereliction of duty, and I think our candidates said, look, we need to get this economy moving again through less of that. The Democrats want to plow ahead, including uh, the upcoming uh, vote on seizing one six our economy through a health care vote. And Dick Blumenthal and Merrick Alpert are all aboard for that. Were there any questions, Nancy, that you thought, um, obviously were constricted by time, but that you would have liked to hear them talk about? Any well, topics, issues? Well, I think on both the debates that I, I think more time has to be given to jobs and the economy. That's what I'm hearing out there, and I think people have to understand uh, where people are situated uh, with jobs and the economy, and not just what's happening now, but their plan for the future. What about you, Chris? Well, <laughs> this all is about the economy yeah. uh, and the state of it, and uh, we, we need to get serious in this country about two things. One. Uh, are we going to have the government in charge of everything? The Democrats that have been in power now with the Obama administration and now Dick Blumenthal want to nationalize a lot of industries. They want to run the government. Excuse me. They want to run the economy. They want to run our health care. And then they want to spend to do that. And I think that's a fundamental shift, a difference between the parties. And I think it will be a great debate no matter who we nominate. And I hope we do have real one-on-one -on -one debates. Uh, where they get to question each other and actually engage each other and not get into these sort of stilted, uh, you know, sort of antiseptic uh, soundbite arama type of thing. Right. We were talking about um, how we are interested in doing other debates. Uh, you'd like to see, you were mentioning, you'd like to see the Attorney General debate. 
Oh yes. Uh, well, I think for all the constitutional offices, all of the all of the state constitutional offices have a critical part of this recovery that we need in this state. The one, the state that the Democratic legislature and I think has has poured us into a huge deficit again. That's only a three billion dollar deficit next year. Uh, that's what this debate is going to be about. Not just about uh, the old bromides. We're a state that's in deep trouble. Uh, and it's because of spending and taxation policies, and we've got, to, we've got to turn that around. And our candidates, I think, we're going to offer that, al that alternative. Nancy, you know, some people made um, something of the fact that Richard Blumenthal left post-debate. He didn't talk to the press. Do you think there was anything to be, to be made of that? No. Uh, Dick Blumenthal is one of the most visible people to the press all the time, yes. and he is always accessible. <laughs> so I, I, I don't think anything of that at all. But I just want to remind, again, my uh, counterpart here that, you know, we've had a, Democrat, a Republican governor for 20 years, and our current governor has had a lack of leadership, which hasn't helped anything in this state. And now we're finding out that we're losing uh, another grant because she just hasn't taken the proper leadership. All right, we're going to, I like your debates, we're going to do more debates, we'll have you back to talk about it. Thanks, Thanks, both of you. Chair of the Connecticut State Democrats, Nancy DiNardo, and Chair of the State Republican Party, Chris Healy. Thanks to both of them. Child prostitutes are getting safe harbor in Connecticut.